coffee has a lot of adverse effects for the patients. Coffee, if at all taken in appropriate quantity, can be good for the patient. If at all it is taken in excessive quantity, it can be bad for the people. So in this topic, we'll be discussing what are the health benefits and risk of taking coffee, where uh, the coffee is good for the health of the patient, where it is bad for the patient. And overall, we'll try to discuss what is the appropriate dosage of coffee which should be permitted to a given person. This is very important because coffee is one of the most common beverages taken all over the world and perhaps in a lot of the part of the world, it is much more prevalent even in comparison to tea also. In uh, southern parts of India, the prevalence of people taking uh, much more amount of coffee as compared to tea is much higher. Although in northern India, we find that people consuming tea are much more common. But whatever uh, said and done, there will be a larger percentage of people taking larger cups of coffee or, or a high number of co uh, cups of coffee on a daily basis all over the world. And there are some people who are so-called coffee addicts also, which might be consuming maybe 10 cups, 12 cups of coffee every day. So for these people, we need to discuss what are the negative and the positive effects of coffee. First, we'll be discussing the positive effects. Coffee has a large amount of antioxidants which protect the cells from the kidney and protect the cells from free radicals induced damage, which usually these free radicals can cause a lot of cardiovascular problems. They can increase the risk of cancer and Alzheimer's disease. So these antioxidant stuff which is present inside the coffee can be helpful in this regard. It is a very useful tool for improving the mental alertness. alertness. All of us know that whenever we have an exam or a job to be done or a task to be finished uh, before the next morning, all of us find it as the last resort. People that night might consume even five to seven cups of coffee also just to keep their mind alert by increasing the dopamine and the norepinephrine levels of the brain, the mind and the mood function of the patient and the overall mental cognitive function of the patient is better. The patient is able to concentrate on the activity much better and thereby it helps every person in focusing on their job in a better way. If at all this is done on an irregular basis or sometimes or an as and when basis, it is good for the people and it can help them to accomplish their targets in a better way. But if that is done on a very common basis and the people are doing this um, maybe three or four times every week and they are staying awake for a longer period of time, for a longer period of duration, then it becomes detrimental for the health of the patient. It improves the athletic performance of the patient also by utilization of fat as a fuel instead of glycogen. So the glycogen depletion is not seen or it's less often seen in the muscles and this improves the energy endurance and the overall stamina of the patient is improved. Fatigue onset is delayed. So if at all you have, want to participate in athletic performance or you want to have a short sprint or a short race or a short outdoor activity, this might be helpful as a health related drink and it might improve your performance in the field. Next is that it can help in reducing the liver related damage because coffee has some uh, important substances which reduce the inflammation of the liver and inflammation is linked to liver related problems over a period of time so if at all you are consuming coffee then there are chances that the liver related issues might be reduced to a certain extent lastly diseases like parkinson disease also show that people who consume coffee the uh, coffee has some chemicals which protect the dopamine producing neurons of the brain and parkinsonism is a neurodegenerative disorder which involves the dopamine producing receptors of the brain. So people who are taking coffee on a regular basis might be having a lesser chances of having this very dangerous and deadly disease. Now what are the negative effects on coffee? The most important uh, adverse effect of coffee is that it can lead to a lot of stress, it can lead to a lot of anxiety, it can make you very jittery, it can make you nervous because people uh, if at all they are taking large amount of coffee they tend to have a large amount of stress hormone inside the body especially cortisol. And this increases your sense of nervousness, anxiety and jitteriness over a period of time. It can affect your sleep also. If at all you are taking coffee on a regular basis and staying awake for a prolonged period of time, your sleep cycle is destroyed and over a period of time you start to have this habit of or problem of insomnia and this adversely affects your health. It increases the chances of you having cardiovascular problems and heart attack and related problems. So if at all you are taking too much amount of coffee, insomnia is a big problem. Next is it increases the chances of people having acidity and acid reflux because coffee can stimulate the uh, acidity producing receptors or the uh, acid producing receptors of the stomach and this increases the acid production inside the stomach and the esophagus and this can lead to increased amount of acid reflux. And the chances of reflux of the acid is also increased because coffee relaxes the esophageal sphincter also. And this leads to much more, much more higher chances of the reflux of the uh, acid which is already present inside the stomach. Next is 
coffee is a very weak diuretic and increases the dehydration and the uh, increases the ex uh, release of excess amount of fluid inside the urine so this can increase the chance of dehydration and decrease of the blood pressure of the patients and it can also lead to the formation of increased risk of kidney stones also over a period of time because kidney stones if at all there is any dehydration inside the body the higher are the chances that the patient develops kidney stones if too much intake of coffee can have some addictive effect people tend to become very irritable and start to develop headache when they uh, stop their coffee intake suddenly people become so much addict to their coffee that they cannot uh, even stay for one day without coffee so it has an addictive effect also that is why people should abstain from taking too much amount of coffee especially very strong coffee another very important thing is that coffee comes with a large amount of milk and sugar also each cup of coffee usually contains 80 to 120 or 150 calories depending on of the cream you take the sugar you take and the milk you take the larger is the extent of milk and sugar you are taking the more is the chances that you develop acid uh, increase calorie intake if at all you are taking more than 5 6 cups of coffee you are taking more than 5 6 100 calories per day and over a period of time this increases the chances of the people developing obesity and you have to reduce your entire food intake over the entire period of day because the maximum recommended calorie intake for the entire day is maybe 1000 to 1500 calories so if at all you are taking this much amount of calories in the form of coffee you have to cut down the other calories because it will increase the chances of you developing obesity next is that some studies have shown that uh, coffee might reduce the risk of chance of developing diabetes by increasing the insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism improvement might be seen but this is not a very consistent effect and it may or may not be applicable in all the cases there are not many big studies to prove this coffee can slightly raise the blood pressure of the patient but usually uh, people who are not consuming too many coffees the chances of the patient requiring blood pressure medicine to control the excessive blood pressure is much lesser because the effect on the blood pressure is very transient but people who are hypertensive should abstain from taking too much amount of coffee next is in during pregnancy status also it is advised that the mother should abstain from taking too much amount of coffee especially many cups of strong coffee because it can lead to uh, some damage to the fetus it can lead to miscarriage or abortion it can lead to low birth weight babies or pre birth or preterm deliveries which can be detrimental both for the mother and the health of the baby also that is why the mother should avoid as many cups of coffee as possible maximum you can be permitted to take one to two cups but not more than that over a period of time next is uh, coffee might increase the risk of osteoporosis because it negatively or adversely affects the calcium metabolism of the patient and over a period of time it makes the bones of the people weak which might lead to increased risk of fractures and other uh, damage whenever you have any injury that is why people who are elderly or people who are already osteoporotic or having some calcium problems they should reduce the intake of coffee next is uh, people although take coffee as a method to reduce the headaches but if at all people are taking coffee on a regular basis and too many cups of coffee it can adversely affect and actually trigger the incidence of headaches and in that may be even bad for the people people might be developing rebound headaches also if they are taking too much amount of caffeine that is why people having say recurrent headaches should ideally avoid too much intake of coffee next is coffee has some beneficial effect in terms of increasing the hdl and lowering of the ldl although this effect is not very consistent and if at all you are taking coffee with a large amount of milk and sugar then actually it will increase the metabolic syndrome it will increase the cholesterol levels and negatively and indirectly it will affect your health overall so that is why people who are uh, obese or having a high amount of cholesterol levels should abstain from taking too much amount of coffee although in small amounts it might be slightly beneficial in terms of hdl and ldl controls coffee also has inconsistent effects on its uh, risk in producing cancers it can reduce the risk of liver colorectal and endometrial cancers while it might increase the risk of pancreatic and bladder cancer that is why it has a inconsistent effect on cancers people who are already having cancers might actually uh, be better off if they are trying to abstain themselves from taking excessive amount of coffee usually it is recommended that people should not take more than 400 mg of caffeine per day which is usually 4 cups of coffee and if at all you are taking excessive strong or black coffee or something like that then you should maybe cut it down to maybe 3 cups or 2 cups per day um, taking any more amount of coffee for the entire day might be detrimental and might be increasing or exceeding the permissible limits of caffeine and it might be having a negative effect on your overall health so today we have discussed the negative impact impact of coffee in your overall health if at all you have any comments queries or suggestion pertaining to this topic or any other topics on which you want us to make more videos upon 
or any patient related queries you can write to us about them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to take up those topics in future the people who are new to my channel i would request you to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of motivation and inspiration to continue the channel in future if at all you are having a problem with a large amount of uh, uh, big videos which are available on our channel you are finding difficulty in finding the selected topic which is of more interest to you we have divided the channel into several playlists you can click on the playlist the link is available in the description box the playlist is made on the basis of the specific topic uh, related to a particular disease the disease about which you want information you can go to that particular playlist click that and there you will find all the topics which are available on my channel pertaining to that particular topic and if at all you are not interested in a huge amount of technical detail on a particular issue we are regularly uploading youtube shorts facebook and instagram reels these things can be taken by you in the form of health tips and these you can share with your friends family and your, in your social media groups as health tips and this in these topics we give you a one minute or brief summary of all the important features of the topic which might be more clinically relevant and useful to the people who do not want huge amount of technical details